Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are looking at what people are actually using AI for right now. In other words, beyond our suppositions and our guesses, is there a way to see these specific types of applications that are driving AI adoption? And last week, we got a study that was trying to do exactly that. The study comes from a team up of OpenRouter and A16Z. A16Z, of course, being a prominent venture fund, and OpenRouter being a startup that provides a unified API that gives developers and users access to hundreds of different LLMs through a standard API gateway. So to provide a little bit more background on who OpenRouter is, the service offers a near-complete range of proprietary and open-source models being served on a range of different infrastructure. They serve 25 trillion tokens monthly across 300 models to 5 million end users. One of the big use cases for OpenRouter is consumer-facing AI apps. So basically, developers can use OpenRouter to automatically route requests to the most efficient or appropriate model. It also provides failover services in case service of a favored model goes down. So not hard to imagine how you would use this if you were a startup. Most startups that are providing some sort of consumer or business interface for using AI are trying to abstract away all the details of which model you're using and things like that. And so OpenRouter gives them an alternative to plugging into just a single model Instead, they can get access to the full suite. It's more redundant. It has potential cost efficiencies. That's the sort of idea here. Now, individual users can also make use of OpenRouter, but that definitely tends to be for extreme power users. By way of example, users can plug their OpenRouter API keys into Cursor and get full access to models without needing to handle multiple sets of keys. The study they released last week is called the State of AI, an empirical 100 trillion token study with OpenRouter. In the abstract they write, we analyzed over 100 trillion tokens of real-world LLM interactions across tasks, geographies, and time. The findings underscore that the way developers and end-users engage with LLMs in the wild is complex and multifaceted. Now, one more note on the methodology before we dive in. While 100 trillion tokens is absolutely nothing to sneeze at and is a very meaningful and reasonable sample size to start to infer some patterns, the caveats are that one, that's somewhere between a 10th and a 15th of the number of tokens Google Gemini was serving per month before the release of Gemini 3. So while 100 trillion is a lot, it is still a fairly limited sample size overall. The second thing to note is that this pattern of usage is concentrated around people who are building things. So if you did a study like this across all the end users who are using ChatGPT and Claude and Gemini and things like that, it would probably look a little bit different. So with that out of the way, let's look at what they actually found. There were a few different things that stood out to me. The first, which just absolutely defined the year, is the balance between reasoning versus non-reasoning tokens completely shifted over the course of the year. Remember, it was only at the beginning of December of 2024 when OpenAI's O1 became broadly available. Since then, and over the course of 2025, reasoning model token usage went from basically negligible to now over 50% of tokens consumed. OpenRouter calls this a full paradigm shift. And I think that this is absolutely a key part of the story of AI in 2025. Now, of course, part of what reasoning models open up is more autonomy and agentic capabilities. And while not as dramatic as the growth in reasoning, some indications of that are also starting to show up in the data. They write that the share of requests that invoke tools rose steadily throughout the year, from around 0% at the beginning of the year to 15% now. Overall, and this will be surprising to no one who is listening to this show, the dominant use case by far, has become programming. Early in 2025, programming was around 11% of usage, and now it is over 50%. We are coming up towards end-of-the-year episodes, and I think any accounting of 2025 has to start with the fact that the dominant and most important phenomenon of this year in AI was the rise of AI coding. That, unsurprisingly, then, is showing up in token consumption in this study. Now, there are some other ways that we see coding as the major use case showing up in the study. The average number of prompt tokens per request, in other words, the average prompt length, grew about 4x over the course of the year, from around 1.5 thousand tokens to 6 thousand tokens. OpenRouter translated it for us, saying, The median request is less, write me an essay, and more, here's a pile of code, docs, and logs, now extract the signal. Now, the next thing that is notable, and in some ways a lot of this study is a tale of two use cases, is that the other use case that dominates is roleplay. Basically, everything in and around chatting with AI in a fantasy context from innocent to not so safe for work. That is particularly true for open source models, where roleplay and or creative dialogue, as they put it, accounted for more than 50% of OSS usage. Now, actually, before we look more at that, let's look at the patterns of open source versus closed source overall. 
Another big story for this year, at least among developers building AI applications, has been the rise of open source models, and specifically Chinese open source models. OpenRouter notes that by Q4 of this year, OpenWeight models had reached about a third of overall usage, but they also noted that they've plateaued this quarter. Now, this makes sense intuitively, given that this quarter, we've seen some major advances in the closed weight models, like Gemini 3, GPT-5.1, and both Sonnet and Opus 4.5. Still, the landscape looks really different than it did last year at this time in terms of the composition of these two types of models, which makes sense when you remember back that the first big story in AI of this year was the DeepSeek moment. Indeed, the rise of Chinese open source models is one of the big phenomenons that OpenRouter noted. They grew from around 1% to as many as 30% in some weeks. In understated fashion, OpenRouter notes, release velocity and quality make the market lively. And really what they're saying and what these numbers are showing is that for developers in 2025, open source models in general, but particularly Chinese open source models, became a major contender when it came to choosing what models you were going to use for your applications. Indeed, it turns out that it's not really an either or, it's a both and. OpenRouter writes, if you want a single picture of the modern stack, closed models are for high value workloads and open models are for high volume workloads. And as they point out, teams are using both. Now, going back to the breakdown of what people are using open source models for, over 50% of it is role play and creative dialogue. Now, I think a lot of people are interpreting this as developers using the open models for use cases that clearly have a lot of demand, but which fall outside the bounds of what closed source providers want their models being used for. It is notable, though, that over the course of the summer, programming also became a big part of open source consumption and now sits at between 15 and 20% of usage. Indeed, when it comes to the Chinese open source models, programming and technology in aggregate are now ahead of role play, which is down to 33%. Basically, the current crop of Chinese open source models is being seen as viable for pretty much every type of use case. One last note from their highlight summary that I think is interesting. They observed what they call a Cinderella glass slipper effect for new models. Basically, when a new model gets released, tons of people come in and try it, and the people who persist create what OpenRouter calls a foundational cohort who resists substitution even as newer models emerge. Basically, they create a foundation and a base group for that model moving forward. So what are other people's observations of the study? Teng Yan, who runs the Chain of Thought AI newsletter, noted a couple things. One of them, which he called out specifically, was the division of different models by different usage. He writes, Anthropics Claude is used for over 80% of programming and almost zero roleplay. It is the serious work model, while DeepSeek is the entertainment king with two-thirds roleplay traffic. He also noted that although people are willing to try new models, as he puts it, quote, a model that's the first to nail a painful workload creates near-permanent lock-in. Early 2025 cohorts of Claude 4 Sonnet and Gemini 2.5 Pro still retain 40 to 50% of users six months later, while every later cohort churns. Relatedly, he points out demand is wildly price inelastic. Users happily pay 10 to 50x more per token for Claude or GPT-5 if it saves them 10 minutes of debugging. Being cheap is nowhere near enough. Going back to this idea of different models for different uses, he noted that there is a new medium-sized model sweet spot in the 20 to 70 billion parameter range. Tokenbender points out that while this study is super useful for understanding the breakdown of different open source model usage, we probably shouldn't extrapolate their patterns overall because OpenRouter is a less preferred option for the closed model providers. Most people were focused on the use cases. Anand Chaudhry writes, OpenRouter reported what everyone building tools already knows. AI usage is mostly long-running coding job with tool calls. Jay Little writes, Heard DeepSeek was good at roleplay, but didn't think 80% of the use would be that, lol. Sean Chahan writes, Roleplaying and creative writing is 52% of open source usage. While VCs fund productivity, humans are using AI to write fanfiction and debug code. The market gap versus reality gap is hilarious. I don't know if that's totally fair. If, for example, you look at the internet, it's not like the fact that there is massive amounts of adult content doesn't mean it's also super useful for productivity. Although it certainly does suggest that there's probably capital opportunities that aren't being taken advantage of because of particular norms and morals. One sub part of the conversation was about how Grok dominated total consumption charts, but this is potentially a little bit dismissible and where the limits of this study show up most to me. Grok made tokens available for free for some time on OpenRouter as part of a promotion strategy, which was obviously successful as a way to get people to try it, but which warps the model results at least a little bit. One really interesting reflection came from Brian Catano, who actually got meta on the success of OpenRouter in general. Brian writes, I really thought Cursor and OpenRouter would not become big. Cursor is just a fork of VS Code. OpenRouter is just a wrapper on top of model APIs. I was very wrong. 
I'm realizing that my baseline visceral skepticism of scaffolds and wrappers needs to be unlearned. The AI market, he continues, is special in its sensitive differentiation. It's easy to switch between providers, but evaluating any model or provider is sensitive. Small changes in input cause large changes in output. This is true at the prompt level and at the model level. GPT-5 versus Claude 4.5 as inputs to write my code will yield vastly different results. So buyers in a sensitively differentiated market have the following problem. It's easy to switch between providers and the models are always getting better. In addition, because this market is so new, none of the models are sticky yet. This might change with memory, etc. So you end up needing wrappers and scaffolds to do your work over time. Otherwise, you lose out on optionality in a rapidly changing provider market. I keep expecting one model to win, but this hasn't ever really happened. Tang Yan again made this point as well. There is no single best model. The top 10 models by volume are from eight different labs. So overall, this is a super interesting study that while focused on a particular audience of app developers and power users in a relatively limited number of 100 trillion tokens still shows some of the big changes that we've been feeling throughout the year. If you want to check out the study for yourself, you can find it at openrouter.ai. It's on a banner right on top of the website. Thanks to the team there and at A16Z for putting this all together. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.